Alright, now it's my OSR, old school rotaries. And today we will be going through the 10A rotors. Uh, as you can see, uh, I got all my uh, tools out. Uh, nothing too fancy. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, check the, the spring action on the side seals, corner seals, oil control rings, and apex seals. And basically, I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and make sure that everything's functioning properly. Uh, nothing's getting stuck. Making sure they're within spec, uh, gaps, uh, the tolerance, and all that stuff. So uh, I'm not gonna take too much time on it. Uh, these are some uh, old used up uh, seals that I have here, with the exception of the corner seal and the apex seal. But basically, I, as you guys remember, these rotors were really bad. Uh, I pretty much brought them back to life. Um, they had a lot of carbon buildup, some rust, and uh, I just want to go ahead and uh, make sure that everything's the way it should be because I will be uh, reusing these on the, um, uh, on the 10A build for my R100. So uh, yeah, let's just get into it. All right, so first things first, the bearings. Uh, you just want to make sure that there's no sign of any uh, copper on, on them. Uh, that's an indication that they're uh, worn out and that uh, they pretty much need replacing. In this case, the bearings are nice and clean. There's no signs of copper showing. Uh, in this case, I wouldn't even measure them with uh, the bore scope or a bore gauge. Um, these are just looking good. And uh, one way um, you could actually uh, go ahead and, uh, and see if uh, they're functioning properly is just you get your eccentric shaft. Uh, you just kind of lube it up in here, you get your center shaft and you just want to make sure it goes in and out uh, easily. So let me show you right quick. Okay, so I got the centric shaft here and this is the bearing that's already lubed up. That way it won't get scratched. So basically this is um, you could, one way you could go ahead and uh, check them. But you see how like it goes in and it turns real smoothly. It's not binding. So that's what you want to see and this is just a quick and efficient way to just check and make sure everything's working fine and obviously there's no uh signs of uh, any wear so meaning there's no uh copper showing so there you go uh next we're gonna go ahead and move on with the gears all right so we're moving on to the ring gear and basically you just want to make sure that the uh, teeth on here are not cracked broken or missing it's pretty obvious to tell if they are uh, in this case they're both in good shape but uh you also want to make sure that the ring gear hasn't traveled meaning hasn't traveled uh, inward or outward and one way uh you can go about checking them is uh by using a straight edge so i got a straight edge right here and you're gonna need a uh uh, you're going to need some two filler gauges. You're going to need one that's four thousandths and one that's six thousandths. Now, the one that's four thousandths uh, should travel underneath the straight edge without a problem. So right here, you can see that it's going underneath there. And you want to make sure you hold it down as, uh, as flat as possible against the rotor. And it's traveling in there without an issue. Uh, let me try this side right here. It's going under there without an issue. Again, holding it flat as possible so you can get an accurate reading. Then you want to go ahead and switch over to the one that's uh, 6,000. And this one should not travel under there. So this one basically stops right here. It's gonna stop right there. It should not go under there. So let's say this one did not travel under there. It actually stopped. That means that the ring gear has traveled um, inward. That means it's kind of collapsed inward. And it, let's just say this one did go under there. That means that the ring gear has traveled upward. So basically these two measurements will give you uh, an idea if your ring gear has traveled. And if it's traveled, Mazda recommends you to go ahead and uh, just swap out, throw out the rotors, get some new ones. Uh, in this case, 
it's a 10a and let's just say it was without uh the correct specs um you could actually tap on these uh it's not recommended you gotta know what you're doing but you can actually tap on them and and kind of make them work and you know there's ways about it uh there's you could you could get them fixed uh but i would just recommend it on the um some rare you know rotors like the 10 a's maybe the twin distributor 12 a's but um any 12 a 13 b's is just better off if you just get yourself another set don't you know don't waste your time or money trying to get them fixed so you do that on this side and you do it on the other side as well so if i lay it down this is the one that's uh four thousands it's going under there pretty easy this one should not go under there stopping there this one should go under there pretty easy as well as you can see and in this case the ring gear has not traveled it's in good shape then we could go ahead and move on to the next step so next uh, we're moving on to the corner seals and basically i'm just going to try to stick to one rotor just for the sake of time but uh corner seals are there's a couple ways you could go about it you could use one of these it's like a go no go um type of tool but uh this just makes the job a lot faster and easier and basically what i do i just uh just make sure that this falls right in and it's nice and snug not loose and that's basically telling me it's a go um another way you could go about it is um you could do it with your own uh, corner seal uh, this is a brand new corner seal six millimeter and you could just uh, drop it in there and it should fall in there nice and easy and what you're looking for is just to make sure that it's not dancing in there it's not bouncing around it's not dancing in there and uh, you should be able to uh, get those uh, corner seals out uh, quite easily as you can see um, they shouldn't be hard to get out you shouldn't be able to struggle but again i'm just checking to see if uh, um you know these rotors are actually reusable after cleaning them and going through all those uh steps i went through and washing them and cleaning them and so far everything is checking out good so this takes a bit longer as you could see um you just want to make sure that let me see that uh, you see how it's not I want to make sure it's not like uh, dancing in there so it's nice and firm in there so well, like I said uh, you want to go ahead and check all your corner seals that way or get yourself one of these uh, go no go go or no go tools which just basically makes the job a lot easier so this is going in, this is going in. Uh, the no-go, it's just like, it, it won't go in all the way. It's, it's, it's basically telling you that it's, it's too tight. So, um, but you really don't need to get fancy or anything like that. You could just go ahead and uh, drop these in and make sure they're not dancing in there. And that's basically the way uh, we went about it back in the day, you know, before I started investing in more tools, but this is a very efficient way you could go about it. So next step, we're just gonna go to the side seals. All right, so next we're moving to the uh, side seals. And basically what I'm using here is a used side seal. Uh, the spring in there is used, and I just wanna make sure that there's enough spring action on here and that the side seal is not binding, so um let me see if i'll get a close up and this is what you want to see you want to make sure that they're popping back up as you press it down in different angles so in this case this side seal pocket it's 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 in good shape uh another thing you also want to do uh you want to uh not only make sure that's popping back up but you want to make sure that the pockets are not badly worn out again this is a used side seal so once i get the new ones you know it's gonna be even a tighter fit and i'm gonna go ahead and double check that once i, I get the new ones on here but for now i just run this across and uh, this filler gauge is four thousands and this 
should not fall in there. Uh, this is your your guide, or this should be uh, what tells you if the pocket is it's oversized. And unfortunately, if that's the case, then uh, the, the rotor's not uh, reusable. Uh, it's a 10A rotor. Uh, let's just say this did fall in there. Let's just say the gap was too big. I, I would probably still go ahead and use it because you just can't find these 10A rotors. So, but that's just me. Um, if it's a 12A, 13B, just go ahead and get some new rotors or some some good used ones. All right, so now we're moving on to the apex seals. And basically, what you want to do, you want to just uh, drop them in there. You can use a spring, or you could just drop them in there. I'll just go ahead and measure them all the way around make sure that it's not binding and then I'll use my filler gauge and uh, again we're gonna use a filler gauge that's four thousandths and you just basically just run it across and it's not falling in there and that would be the maximum allowance so it's not falling in there and that's what you want to see so you could just let it drop run it across or you could lift it up and and run it across so in this case it's not falling in there you know you want to do that all the way around so what I like I said what I do I just drop them in there and once I do that I'll go around and just make sure that uh, there's enough uh, spring action but in this case there's no issue uh, the rotor doesn't seem to be damaged in that area. And the apex is moving nice and free. Uh, the gap is just right on the money. Okay, so oil control rings. Uh, so these are obviously used. And again, I'm just uh, making sure that the rotor is reusable. And I'm using these used uh, oil control ring casings. And um, obviously I'm gonna get some new ones for this engine, but um, I just wanna make sure everything's going in smoothly. That way I won't have any surprises uh, towards the end. So, and you wanna make sure they're completely installed, completely in there. So again, uh, I'm gonna get some new casings for, for this rotor or these rotors. I'm just making sure that nothing's binding, everything's working properly, everything's working the way they should. So in this case, this one's working good. And that's what you want before you start investing in these engines. You wanna make sure you go through everything and make sure everything's springing up the way it should, popping back out the way it should. Um, uh, especially in this particular engine this is a very special engine and I just want to make sure everything's right as you can see you can see it's springing up right there springing up right there it's not popping out it's not loose it's not dancing in there it's just right so I'm not gonna get too much into uh, checking the, the free height and all that stuff, the spring action. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, just uh, continue checking the rest of it. And like I said, I'll probably go through it two, or three, four more times just to make sure that it's reusable. Um, if these rotors were still around, they were still making them, I would definitely buy some new ones. But in this case, I'm like trying to make this happen. And so far, um, the Lord's been good. Uh, these came back to life. Everything checked out, so. All right, so there they go. 10A rotors, check them twice. Everything checked out good. You guys see me do those apex seals, side seals, corner seals, you name it. And uh, basically that's all the specs that, uh, that Mazda recommends for these 10A uh, rotors. So all the specs I gave out there for 10A rotors, and it's kind of standard throughout uh, 12 A's, 13 B's, but uh, those particular specs are for uh, specifically for 10 A's. So um, if you guys are building a 10A, I mean, you could probably use this as a guide, but uh, these checked out good. I'm gonna go ahead and check them one more time once I get all uh, the new side seals and the, the new uh, oil control rings and 
I'm obviously gonna check them one more time once I get all those parts in. And uh, now they're pretty much uh, basically ready to send them Mazda tricks. Um, I'm trying to make some horsepower out of this. I'm not gonna reveal what route I'm gonna go yet, but definitely stay tuned. Uh, for the next few videos, uh, I'll be revealing uh, the final say on, on which route I'm gonna take uh, with, with, with this 10A engine. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, and uh, yeah, let the word out. So uh, we're going to see how much horsepower we can make out of these 10As. So uh, uh, guys are out there uh, focusing on 13Bs, 3 rotors, 4 rotors, but uh, not many with the <laughs> with the 10A. So let's, let's see what we could do with the 10As. This is where it all started, and uh, let's see what we could push on these. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys.